Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi guys, welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is a companion to my website www.texasflycaster.com a site that's been in existence and thriving since 2008. So if you find information missing here, please go to that website and I'll fill in the blanks there for you. Usually all you have to do is search or if you don't find what you're looking for, feel free to ask. As you can see from that footage earlier, I was on the Texas Gulf Coast last week at Port O'Connor, Texas. It was a beautiful stay and I'd written an article about going there previous to going where I predicted kind of the kind of fishing I had, which was pretty average to below average, to say the least. I caught some rat redfish, and that's about it. Some speckled trout, small. Um, and the reason, and as I predicted, was the slack tide. And if you're not aware of what a slack tide is, which, you know, you may not be, you may only fish fresh water, um, we'll get to that. If you're not aware of what a slack tide is, there's like an average like this. A mean so to speak and those tides fluctuate in and out like this if you look at a graph of it well if that graph is more flat like this that means that and below that line that means that the tides are basically slack and so for 24 hour periods during the middle of the month you need to you need to look you know I didn't have a choice uh, as far as when I could go during a, during a more active tide period so um, I went when I could go and stay for free, of course, and um, that means that I take the tides I get, and they were slack, and so the water doesn't go up into the the areas where grass is, where shrimp would be, and, and the fish don't migrate in and migrate out. They just stay down, and they'll come up just slightly during the tidal changes, but not like they should when there's a big rush of tide in and out. And that big rush of tide in and out also does another thing besides generating a feeding uh, momentum. I'd, I'd call it a feeding momentum is a good way to call it. Um, they also uh, have the effect of disorienting bait fish. So the, the tides can move so fast, and this is in Texas, the tides can move so quickly that it disorients the bait fish and it makes it a lot easier prey for the fish we're after, which are typically your redfish and your speckled trout. Of course, for me, I, I'm I enjoy the redfish thing, but I really am um, trying to hone in on speckled trout as a bigger challenge and, and a, a more difficult adversary. Uh, you may not know that you know redfish are stocked in Texas along the coast by the millions, and that's one that along with the conservation moves we've made in Texas has made a big difference in how the uh, saltwater fishing for those two species has gotten so good. It's also bled over into, uh, into a good situation for flounder, too, with the winter runs being protected. So what I saw was pretty calm water, very clear. I was fishing on the backside of Mud Island, trying to stay out of that wind, which at one point was blowing 40 miles an hour. That's another thing we deal with on the Texas Gulf Coast is high winds, and that's, that was a real problem while I was there. And uh, it really, really limits the places you can can go look for fish so that's 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 about the salt it was fun it was great the boat worked perfectly if you didn't know I'm running a uh, lagoon boat it's by a l fiberglass out of Cocoa Florida it's a custom boat that I had built last year and uh, strangely enough that was almost exactly a year ago now that I went and picked it up and that was exactly about the time I got diagnosed with cancer so it's been, a, it's been a year since all that, and for all you haters out there, sorry, I'm still here. Uh, probably not many of you guys left. You probably think I'm bulletproof by now, but the truth is I'm not. So let's move on to fresh water. Of course, that's close by. I'm here in North Texas, Denton, Texas, and I guide for carp on a lake called Ray Roberts here in North Texas off of my skiff. And we had a situation for the beginning of July and, and into, you know, through June where they were releasing a lot of water for no good reason other than to flood the next lake down on the Trinity River chain, which is 
Louisville. And so I guess we're all caught up because the, the lake has dropped significantly, but now it's gaining some consistency. I went out and did quite well on uh, spotting and casting and catching carp three days ago. The flats have risen in the water column now to where they're right at the right depth. And of course, since they've lowered the lake, in my opinion, too much, uh, evaporation and consumption by the, the masses in the DFW area will um, take the water off the flats probably in about a month unless we get more rain. That's just the, the kind of double-edged sword we have here. You have to excuse me, I have to drink water because my throat, even after a year, it's in all the things I've been through, it's, it's still kind of parched. And I find, I'm going to give a real quick plug here, Camelback, and these, these are the water bottles that uh, cyclists use. I was a cyclist, and I'm hoping, hoping to get the strength to get back into it. These are great for on the water. They're lined. You can freeze, half freeze them in the freezer and have a big block of ice in there. Camelback, good stuff. And it fits in most of the, the pockets of your, of your uh, particular waste packs or whatever. So anyway, in the Texas scene and fresh water, we're finally settling down without these torrential rains and floods and the strange weather we, we've been blessed with for the last two months. It's getting hot here in North Texas this morning. It's the winds picking up, but it's not too humid. And so it's, it's really a good time to get out and fish if you can just find some shade in the middle of the day or call it off by the hottest time of the day. The rivers, I hear good things about uh, the, the Brazos River. I'm hearing good things all along the Brazos River chain below the dams and things like that. So keep your eyes open. Some situations have changed, like Whitney. Um, that that particular dam there is uh, apparently open and cl closed more often now. So that's one you got to pay attention to the warnings and everything else. Uh, go with somebody who's done it before. That's my best opinion on that. Anyway, that is a quickie. I just wanted to give you a local perspective that you can probably apply as far as what's going on on Ray Roberts. Another thing about Ray Roberts, before I, before I end this thing, uh, if you're looking for bass on fly, you want to go a little deeper now. You're into the, the 10 to 15 foot range and probably your best bet is around the dams. You know, hit that riprap with a big old double bunny flyer or something that emulates a worm and that should really do you some good. Um, otherwise you can get top water you know zero to maybe five feet uh, action on points that are covered with brush that are starting to come down. That brush is coming up as the water comes down and they're fronting. I, the, the last time I caught some nice sized bass they were fronting on the front side of that uh, grass as the wind's blowing so when you see that wind blowing this way and the grass is right here you want to fish this side of the grass bushes weeds or whatever because I think what happens is they're they're trapping that bait before it gets into those weeds and gets away if uh, and if that's in later in the day in the evening I'd say earlier in the day or in the morning try the back side of that grass and see what happens in bush and, then, and the back sides of uh, and the front points of points Give that a go for bass. If I'm wrong, tell me. I think I'm right. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, will have a very detailed series of stories about the Port O'Connor experience. I mean, excuse me, Port O'Connor, Port Aransas experience coming out um, starting this week. And of course, many of you have probably been waiting for the stories on South Padre Island from January, that's a long time ago now and so many things and so many problems got in the way that that hadn't come out yet and that story's gotten a little old in my mind. I might even hold it off until this fall for people who want to fish in the winter. There's a whole lot of things about uh, salt water that are starting to come to my mind and, and it's going to be a very interesting experience to try to actually get down to the coast starting in October, September, October, once a month at least, at the very least. Um, if you're in the Houston area, let me clue you in. There's going to be actually a tournament in Houston coming up. It's a Bayou City thing down there in the, uh, the Bayou's a carp tournament. 
it's either August 6th or August 7th. They haven't decided on the date yet, but keep your eyes open for that. There is a Facebook page for Houston Fly Fishers. It's a, you have to be invited in or allowed in. You, I guess you ask and then you get accepted or whatever. But Houston Fly Fishers on Facebook, those guys are, are the kind of guys you really want to know. If, if you want to know me, you want to know them as far as the kind of progressive thinkers and, and not, not, it's not a club. It's not anything to do with the club or anything like that. There's a guy over there in Houston right now you need to check out. It's, his website's HoustonFlyFishing.com. His name is Danny Scarborough. And Danny has found Grinnell in the last 10 days. And he is guiding for Grinnell over there around Houston and Conroe area. If you've never caught one of those, you need to go try this Grinnell thing out. They are the freakiest fish you'll ever find on a fly. That's Danny Scarborough at www.houstonflyfishing.com. Check him out. All right, I tried to end this thing 15 times. I'm gonna end it now with one plug. I don't get any money or any sponsorship from these guys, but Smart Shield is a good product for your skin uh, for sunscreen and they come out with a spray it seems like it's kind of wasteful as far as how much spray comes out but from what I've heard and what I've read the scientists and science experiments have shown that spray is more effective than rub on type sunscreen and smart shield is the best sunscreen you can get so that's good stuff I've got product reviews coming out I've got fly tying videos coming out and I've got a special video coming out in the next two or three days to show anyone, it's a generic video, how not to get shot by a police officer during a, during a routine traffic stop. Sorry, but you guys, there's so many ignorant people out there that, that don't know how to act that I'm gonna teach you through a video, not really how not to get shot, but how to act properly when being stopped by a police officer. It's a really simple solo video, and uh, there'll be some tips in there that I've learned over the years, either through being stopped and not getting a ticket, but being stopped, or uh, or from knowing the police police officers I know through the years. So check that video out on the same channel. It'll be way off topic, but uh, it seems like something we need to do in the crazy times in which we live, where people don't know how to act anymore. Thanks for watching. Always, always check out the website www.texasflycaster.com. Thanks to my sponsors. And I look forward to seeing you more regularly as the fishing has become very consistent here in Texas. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Thanks also goes out to the sponsors. If you need more information, be sure to visit www.texasflycaster.com. And if you have any information about fly fishing in Texas, feel free to share it, and we'll be glad to get it on the report.